Okay, guys, listen, listen very carefully. Everybody listening. Guys, okay, listen very carefully. So, here's a major scale, right? Okay, so if you play this. Those are diatonic chords. What does diatonic mean? Adrian, what does diatonic mean? Huh? No. Diatonic means in the key. It's in the key. It's these notes. Any step off the phone, please. Okay, if I do this, it's not diatonic anymore. Okay, well, if I do this. It's not diatonic. Guys, guys, I need you to concentrate. I really need you to concentrate. This is a major matrix set work. Okay, major. It's not diatonic anymore. What's happening here? If I do if I do this, and then I do this. What's the difference? Extreme distance. What is this called? If this is called dissonance, then what's this called? Huh? Okay. Consonance. It's lovely. It's 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 harmonic. It's pretty. Okay, and this? How do you feel? How do you feel? Edgy, scared, anxious, dissident, right? Okay. So guys, listen very carefully. In 1865, the thing that pushed the Romantic era over into the post-Romantic era and then eventually to total dissonance in 1910, which we studied, please listen, right? Was Wagner and what chord? What was that chord called? The Tristan chord. In his opera, he came up with a chord that had this, this note in it. Okay, what is this interval? Sorry, that was not the Tristan chord, but I'm saying it, it was like a chord that sounded something like this. Okay, so what is this interval? Augmented fourth, right? Yes, so, the senses, right? Or Maria from West Side Story, okay? Okay, listen very carefully, guys. So, within this series of, like, if you're in C major, Joseph, you're listening. Good. You don't look like it. Guys, it, within C major, C to D sounds like this. Please listen, please listen, please listen. This is so important. You can't miss a beat here, Delita. You've got to listen. Right? C to D. Well, how does it make you feel? Uneasy. Huh? Uneasy. Okay, as uneasy as this. Uh, Which one's better? First one, second one. Right. It makes you feel like there's an event that's about to happen, but there's the suspense just before it. That's it. Okay. This is a consonant, guys. God, Jack, Jack, this is a consonant dissonance. Why is it consonant? It's in the key, it's C to D, right? This is not a consonant dissonance, this is a pure dissonance. It's not in the key, it's C to C sharp, right? So C to C sharp, C sharp's not in the key of C major, so, right? This one? So watch this. There's that, that thing. How nice does that sound? Okay, so that's a, a C9. Look how pretty that is. Okay, you can do it on a lot of different chords. C, very pretty. That's an A minor chord or an A minor 9, right? Now if I do this... Is it, there's something wrong with that. So there's something completely and utterly wrong with this. That's because this C sharp is out of the key completely. So it's one key on top of another key. It's like doing this. It's two keys. That's C major. And this is F, F sharp major. And this is C major. And I'm putting them on top of each other. Is it nice? No, it's horrible. Yes, yes. So C9 and C What's that? C9 and C No, it's not cool. Okay, guys, is that understood? I, I just said it to close the issue. It's a much more complicated discussion, but basically it's a similar chord. It just sometimes means that some other note is left out. 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay, can we forget that for now? Guys, Tobin, can everybody concentrate? Joseph? Joseph, come stand here. Because you're not concentrating, you're not hearing me at all. Come sit, stand here. Bring your lunch. Bring your lunch. Stand here. Come, come, come. Guys, you have to concentrate. I want my A's in the trick, and this is where you're going to get it. Okay. So listen very carefully. Quiet. So consonant dissonance, extreme dissonance, semitone, and then this is the next dissonance, which is the augmented fourth, which is the sound that you, you're hearing all the time in West Side Story. Okay. So the other interval, this is a major third, happy, there's a minor third, sad, perfect fourth. It sounds, it sounds a bit um, Eastern in a way. So is this, perfect fifth. Minus six, listen please. Okay, guys, 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 guys. Okay, you listening. Michael, you listen. Minus six. Very pretty, beautiful, major six. The perfect way to start a romantic melody. Okay. Beautiful. Now we get to minus seven. Dissonant, right? And if I add it into a dominant chord, do you notice the dissonance? Not as much. So watch. Now I'm just going to add two notes. Watch. Sounds great, right? That's because in the key of F, this is a consonant dissonance. Because that interval from B flat to C, right? Where's Douglas? C. <coughs> that interval from B flat to C is a tone. But if I, and if I do this, that also sounds nice. But I've got a semitone there. Okay, so guys, listen carefully. Tobin, off the phone, please. Off the phone. Off the phone. Off the phone. Okay. Stop reading your Valentine's Day cards and listen to me. Please, please, please listen. Because this test is not going to be easy, guys. It's not going to be easy. You have to get into this. You have to understand it. And you have to, this, we're heading into the trick. So you've got to start getting out of baby mode into little musical genius mode. Okay, you with me? Okay. So what Bernstein does is he says there's got to be dissonance in the story. Why? Because the clash of the Huh? Two teams. What are the two teams? Why is the tension? Right. It's racial tension, guys. That's what it is. So this is this is a, a, a very tense story. So he's got to have dissonance. So he could have chosen this one. He could have chosen this one. But he chose this one. This is the third dissonance, which is the augmented fourth, right? Now that is the chord. Remember, I told you Wagner is the chord that that sharp four, the chord with that augmented interval, is the Tristan chord. And that's when dissonance, wait, Jack. And the first chord came in and people said, I don't know what that is. Explain that chord to me because it's not a dominant seven. I can't define it. And that's when there was a major shift. So in 1865, that idea, wait, of the augmented fourth came in. And later on, it came back into jazz. So instead of Bud Powell in the bebop era playing this, which is a normal dominant seventh, he put in the sharp four. Suddenly the harmony becomes so much more complex. Can you hear it? Okay, so what's happening in the 50s? Hang on, just listen. So what's happening in the 50s when this was written by Bernstein is that he's taking this complex harmony that we've discovered from Wagner and we've got from the jazz era and he's putting it into a musical and he's deliberately using it. It's not random, it's not haphazard, it's not um, a coincidence or something like that. It's absolutely specific. Okay, questions? Uh, yes. Um, look, look how pretty that is, and it's got a it's got a semitone here, but but as opposed to this, which is a semitone. So yes, this is a consonant distance because the B is in the key. Uh, minus seven. Consonant. Beautiful. Yeah. Uh, so, so in, in the context of West Side Story, could you mention something about the fact that the 
reason why Jensi didn't choose absolute dissonance is because there is conflict between the groups, but then you also have the two main characters who are in love, and they aren't fighting. So you can't have complete dissonance because that assumes that it's yes. always Yes, beautiful. So there isn't, there isn't complete dissonance. In some of the songs that they sing, there's no dissonance. So when she sings, I feel pretty, no dissonance. Because in her bubble, in her world, I feel pretty, there's no dissonance. I am a pretty girl going out to a dance. In some of the other gospies, in some of the periods of the songs where Tony Maria sings, there's no dissonance. Because there are moments where for them there's no dissonance. But, just, just watch it before I answer your question, you're listening. The song that goes, Maria, it doesn't do this, watch, Maria, because it's not free of tension. So there are moments where he sings, Maria, or Maria, something like that. Okay, I'm, I'm just busking, I'm not sure if that's exact, but there are moments when he doesn't sing, but the reason it's there is because there is, there, it's a foreboding, um, awareness of something that's going to go wrong here. Okay, does that make sense? Question? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, I mean, basically that tension is there, it does resolve, so, but it's there. So it does resolve, but it's still there, as opposed to, as opposed to no tension. Is it? Okay. Why is the Simpsons it augmented for? The family's, family's dysfunctional. This relationship between Tony and its bubble isn't really dysfunctional, but it, the environment that it's in is dysfunctional. Right? dysfunctional. So that's why it's there. Okay, is that well understood? Okay, so guys, in the play, listen here. Listen here. Guys, please listen. Michael, where does that come from? In the play. Yeah. So in the beginning, there's this little whistle that goes. Can you hear that? So here's the establishing of the key. Watch here. And then it goes. Which is something else. Right? So it goes. Right? If I put chords under there. So there's the establishment, 5 to 1. How do you establish a key? You go 5 to 1. Now it goes. What the hell is that? You know, what is that? Yeah. So in America, is there dissonance? It is like there is conflict. There is conflict. Okay. Okay. So listen carefully. This is conflict of tonality. Yes, C. And this is. That's F sharp major. In America, da 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 What is that? Conflict of? Having concentration. Conflict of? Rhythm. Right. So anywhere that he can create, this, it's that, now it's this. It's that, now it's this. He does that. So in America, the concentration is on two key signatures that alternate every bar. It's 6, 8, 3, 4, 6, 8, 3, 4, 6, 8, 3, 4. It's not written like that. He breaks the rules, and I'm going to show you that later. So he puts it in a compound duple meter, which is 6, 8. But then the second bar is in 3, 4. Okay, so conflict of rhythm, conflict of tonality. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, cool. Are you getting it? Yes. So all these little things, now li listen to them. I'm, I'm not a pianist. So all these things, you'll hear this. He has two notes in C major. Leading note, bar, establishing the key. And then he goes, what's that? That key's, that note is out of the key. So he goes, okay. It also just happens to be a kind of a, a bebop note encasing thing. Well, it's not really note encased, but it's sort of playing two notes and then going to another one, okay? And this, <coughs> and this, okay, same thing. Yeah, here's the next one. Um, do you hear that? So in the Jet song, it does this. Um, da -da -da -da, it repeats again. So once again, you've got the establishment of the key. That's what you 
empty at the airport. Right? Nice major sound. And then suddenly that sharp chord drops in again. Right. Moving on to Tony's song, Something's Coming. He sings that. Right? There's the, there's the augmented fourth interval again, resolving back onto that thing, onto the, the G, onto the, the dominant. Okay, over here. You know that one? That's Maria. Okay, um, moving on to Jet Song G Officer Krupke, which they use again. Okay. Okay, cool. Jet Song. That's the uh, the theme in the in the in the jet song. Sorry, cool guys. Do you know cool? Tell them listen. Okay, cool. And then in the rumble, which is where they have the fight scene. Okay, and the guy with the key like that. Does that make sense, guys? Okay, you with me? 